In this example, I'm going to show you how important it is to use scoped slots when working with a third-party component library. So far, in previous examples, all the components, you know, both parent and child components, are developed by ourselves, and we can use them together. Well, in this example, we're going to develop a parent component, and in this parent component, we're using a component not designed or developed by ourselves, but from a third-party component library called Element UI. So here is the story. First, we're going to request 200 to-dos from JSON placeholder, if you still remember the website. So on JSON placeholder website, you can request all kinds of resources. And in this case, we're going to request 200 to-dos from this URL. So once we use Axios, for example, to request this URL, and we got a JSON array. So each item here represents a to-do. And there are four keys or four properties for each to-do. User ID, ID, title, and completed. That's step one. Once we get the 200 to-dos in JSON array, then we're going to use a table component to render those 200 to-dos in four columns. User ID, ID, title, and completed. But we're not going to use the HTML table. We're going to use the table from Element UI component library. So table is a component. All right, so let's get back to VS Code. So first, step one, we're going to use Axios to request 200 to-dos and save the 200 to-dos in data options list. So here, stores 200 to-dos. OK, next, I'm going to define a method in methods. And the name is get to-dos list function. And in here, I'm going to use Axios. I have already imported Axios. So Axios.get. I have already copied the URL. So here I'm going to paste. All right. This one returns 200 to do's. And we're going to use async and await to simplify the syntax. So here, right, await. I'm going to define a variable. Here I'm using ES6 destructuring syntax. We're only interested in the data property in the response. And then we're going to rename data to result. After we got result, we can assign result to this dot list in data property. This dot list equal to rest. Now to test, I'm going to log this. So log this dot list. So of course, this function won't get called by itself, right? So we're going to define a hook function in created. Once the view instance gets created, uh, we're going to call this function this dot get to do list. Well, before we launch it, uh, if you remember that, if you use await, uh, you have to use async. Okay, so async. So in an async function, we use await in front of asynchronous call. Uh, and then uh, we have to use async outside here. All right, so right click and view in browser. We're going to press F12. As you can see, we got 200 to do's. Okay, that's step one. Then step two is we're going to use Element UI's table component to render the 200 to do's. I'm very excited to introduce you Element UI. Element is a Vue 2.0 based component library for developers like you guys, designers and product managers. So why do we use a library? Ask yourself, why do you want Bootstrap? Uh, the whole point of using a library is that we can reuse components designed by other people. So we do not have to reinvent the wheel because so far we have been developing all components by ourselves. But if some components are reusable, why not we make it public and let other developers download it? Okay, And you can design your own component library. Element UI is one of the best view component library. There are, of course, other libraries. Okay, now remember our goal? 
we request 200 to-dos, and we're going to use a component called el-table from Element UI to render the 200 to-dos. So let's take a look at all kinds of components that are offered by Element UI. So click here, Components. On the left side, if you scroll down, there are all the components. We got basic components like layout, layout container, uh, button, link. We also have forms, uh, slider. And down here, we have uh, form, but we're interested in table. So I click table here. So this is a basic table component. Uh, down here, we have stripe table. We have table with borders. But in this example, we're going to stick with the basic table. How do we use this? Uh, if you click expand, uh, here is an example of how to use this component. Uh, we're going to copy this part, everything in between template, copy, and go back to VS Code. Okay, so here uh, we're going to paste this in between this div. Now remember, this div with id equal to app, this represents the parent component, which is our current view instance. Uh, remember, a view instance is also a component. We're using uh, the el-table component inside this parent component. Okay, but the difference is we didn't develop this one. We're using it from a third-party library. Okay, so this el-table is not a built-in HTML tag. So it's, it's not table, it's el-table. This one represents a third-party component. If you remember that after you design a component, then you can use a HTML tag for it. Well, the first time we use components in Element UI, things looks a little bit scary because there are so many new tags, right? El table, here we have el table column, and we have new attributes like uh, data, style, prop, label, width. We, we know what style and width is, right? But what is data? What is prop? What is label? We're going to talk about it later on. Okay, so first let's look at this structure. Uh, inside this uh, el table, there are three columns, column, column, and column. So if I go back to Chrome, uh, in this demo here, uh, it looks there are three columns, date, name, and address. Okay, so that means each el table column represents a column. Well, in fact, el-table-column is also itself a component. Remember, component can be nested within another component. So this is a parent component, and inside this parent component, we have a child component called el table column. Actually, we have three, right? Okay, so first let's change label. Probably label is the header of this uh, column. Well, in our case, if you remember, a to-do has one, two, three, four, four columns, user ID, ID, title, and completed. So in our case, we're going to delete the second and the third column. Uh, we're gonna do copy and paste. We need four columns. Copy here, paste, paste, and paste. Okay, well, the label of the first one is called user ID. And the second label is ID of this uh, to-do. And third label is title, basically is a description of the current to-do. And the last one is completed. So let's call it status, okay? It is either true or false, uh, complete or incomplete. Okay, uh, next we're gonna talk about uh, what is data and what is prop. How do I know the meaning of these two attributes? Well, every time you have a question about a third-party component, always read their documentation. So let's go back to Chrome, go back here. For every component in Element UI library, it provides a simple example and some descriptions. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. After setting attribute data of el-table with an object array. Okay, so that means this table data is pointing to an object array. In other words, this one provides all the data for the current table. Well, in our case, we should put this to list because list has 200 to do's. So let's look at this small example here. What is in table data? So scroll down here in script. Well, by the way, this data function here corresponds to our data option here. Okay, uh, go back here. Now inside this data function, uh, there is a property called table data and it is pointing to an array of objects. In this case, array of one, two, three, four, four objects. Okay, so we're passing or binding this table data in this data function to the data attribute in this component. All right, let's go back here. Uh, based on the example, we're going to copy this. So this one has all the data we're going to render in this table. So copy, and here we're going to delete this. 
and paste. So this syntax here is called v-bind. We're binding a property in data option into this uh, data attribute of this uh, component. Uh, okay, so what happened here is this data is actually a component prop, if you still remember. Okay, if you forget what is a prop means, uh, then check my previous videos. Okay, next, let's talk about this prop. So what does this prop attribute mean in this el-table-column? So let's go back to the simple example. So here in the first column, the prop is date. The second column's prop is different, is name. The third prop is address. Well, I remember I have seen them, right? If I scroll down, that's right. The three props corresponds to the three keys or three properties in each item in this array. Okay, so let's scroll up here. It says, after we set data of el-table, we can use prop. Now each prop corresponds to a key or property of the object in this data array in el-table-column to insert data to table columns. All right, so let's go back here. Now in our case, we have four props. The first one is, now if you forget, I always go to the documentation here, user ID, ID, title, and uh, completed. Okay, so the first one is user ID. Uh, second one is ID, that's the ID of the to-do. And third one is title. And fourth one is completed. Okay, that's it. That's all we need to do to render 200 to-dos in this EL table. Very simple. First, we're going to bind this list to data. So this list has all the 200 uh, to-dos. Then we need to let this uh, component know that uh, which four columns that we're interested in. Uh, the one, two, three, four. In this case, we print all the columns. So let's right click. And then we're going to view in browser. Okay, there will be an arrow. Okay, so view, and there's nothing. Uh, if I press F12, as you can see, uh, there's a view warning it says unknown custom element el-table because el-table is not a built-in HTML. So that's why view doesn't know what this is. So the problem is we forgot to download and install the element UI because that's a third party, right? So how to do that? Go here, uh, click components. And there are many ways to install. We can use NPM, but we're going to use the simple way. It's a CDN. So copy these two. One is CSS and one is JavaScript. Copy and go to VS Code. After uh, Vue.js and Axios, we're going to paste. Okay, then we have access to all the components in Element UI. But here we're only using uh, two, right? Table and column. All right, this time go back to Chrome here, uh, refresh. Okay, as you can see, here is the table that has four columns. Uh, well, it's interesting we don't have the last one because based on the philosophy of Element UI, showing true or false on a table is not very user-friendly because uh, we know what true is, what, what false is, right? But our user may be a non-computer scientist, right? Uh, so it's refusing to render true or false. So what should we do? Uh, we should make it more user-friendly. Uh, next, I'm going to show you uh, the third component that we're going to use in this example called el-tag. Okay, If it's true, we're going to show complete in a very beautiful tag. Uh, if uh, it's false, we're going to show a red tag shows incomplete. Uh, go to component here. Uh, just search it, el-tag, or simply just type tag. Okay, press enter. Uh, if it's complete, we want to show this green one. If it's incomplete, we're going to show this uh, red one. How to use it? Uh, click expand. We're going to use tag two and also tag five. So copy. So this is success and this is danger. And go to uh, Visual Studio. All right. For the last part, for the last column, I want to print this one and this one. Okay. So here I'm going to change it to danger. Instead of printing true or false, well, you cannot print true or false in admin UI, right? I'm going to put completed if it's true and here in complete. Uh, in this uh, EL table column, uh, there are two more components, okay? Tag and tag. Okay, go to Chrome, go here and refresh. Well, this time we do see two tags, right? Completed and incomplete. Well, those look very beautiful. Uh, but this is not what we want to do, okay? We only want to show one of those because a to-do cannot be both completed and incomplete, right? 
So here, we definitely need a v dash if and v dash else. So here, v dash if. Okay. Uh, so to do dot completed, remember completed is true or false. So if it's true, uh, then we're going to show completed. Uh, here is v dash else. Okay. If it's else, uh, we're going to ignore the first v dash if tag and show the second one. But does it work? Of course not. Remember, because by default, this parent, in this case, the parent is uh, this right here. Okay. The parent has no access to an individual item in this to-do list. Okay, the parent have access to this list, but in this case, we have no access to each individual to-do. So using this is not correct. Then what should we do? I'm sure many students now start to realize that this is very similar to our previous example, the Harry Potter name equal to red, remember? So if the name of student is equal to Harry, then we can make this name red. Otherwise, we're gonna print this name as is. But this time it's different. We're trying to uh, tell if the complete is true, uh, we'll show this, otherwise show this. The solution is scoped slots. So the developers of Element UI component provide scope slots for every component. So we as a user, so right now I'm the user of the third party component. I can use the scope slots they provided to customize my code. Okay, so here's how to do it. Now remember, uh, you have to use something called template. So template, then I'm gonna cut these two, right? Cut and paste it in here, okay? Now, in order to use scope slots, we have to use a, a view directory called v-slot uh, equal to slot props, okay? Slot props, remember slot props is a, an object that has all the slot props, all right? Well, it turns out that in Element UI, the name for individual item in the list is called row. So slot props dot row dot completed. Now, do you remember in the Harry Potter example, we use STU uh, for each item in the list, right? But this time, uh, Element UI is using row, okay? So you have to use row. How do I know? I read documentation, okay? Uh, so this name can be anything. For example, if you, can, you can change this to Bing, no problem. Right? But uh, uh, the second part, this role represents uh, that item that the child component exposes to the parent. Okay, so I'm going to change it back. Slot props. Okay, paste. Okay, so if this is true, then we're going to show the first tag. Otherwise, we're going to show the second tag. All right, come back here. I'm going to refresh and put it into the last column. All right, this time we show the correct tag based on uh, row dot completed. In summary, I want every student to understand why I'm introducing demo 13 to you guys. The first reason is I want to use this example to kind of reinforce the importance of scope slots and let you understand why we need it, especially when you work with a third party component now, 100% chance if they can use uh, scope slots. Well, the second reason is uh, if you're developing a component by yourself and want to make it public, uh, for example, on GitHub for other people to download, make sure you design a scope slot for the component. Uh, that will expose uh, some information in the child component to the parent component that gives the user a chance to customize it. Okay, so number one, number two. The third reason is how important it is to use a third-party component library because uh, all we are doing here is we're passing the data to the prop of this uh, EL table component. And in the for each column, we're pointing to which key we're interested in, and that's it, okay? This component is doing all the work, all the rendering work for us. Uh, and we can customize it, so it's very convenient. Uh, if you're working on a project using Vue in future, uh, I highly recommend you pick one of the component libraries. Element UI is one of the best, but I will include uh, some alternatives in the description of this video below. So learn how to use frameworks and libraries is uh, very important. Uh, it will increase your productivity uh, greatly. Okay, you don't have to reinvent wheels over and over again. I hope you learned something from this video.